Uh, we're super excited to have you here today. Thank you so much for uh, joining us for a fun discussion on all things that are coming up with AppFlow. Uh, so I am Cecilia Martinez. I'm a developer advocate here at AppFlow. Uh, you can feel free to connect with me on Twitter at Cecilia Creates or X. I still call it Twitter. I, I can't get used to it, but um, yeah, feel free to connect with me there. Um, and I'm joined today by Matt Netko and Ashwini Shukla, both product managers at AppFlow. Hey, Matt. Hey, Ashwini. Hello. Hello. Thanks so much here. for being here today. Uh, yeah. So, well, before we dig into some exciting AppFlow updates, I want to take a moment and spend a little more time getting to know the team. So I, you probably have seen Matt and Ashwini on various webinars like this one or the Ionic Show episodes or maybe in product announcements and blog posts, but you know, how well do you really know them? And so I wanted to take a minute here and just chat about their uh, time at, at Ionic, what they work on, and a little bit more about themselves. Uh, Matt, do you want to kick us off? What can you tell us about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Cecilia. Yeah, I uh, reached my five-year anniversary at Ionic in June, which was really exciting milestone. And um, in that time, I've worked in a variety of roles from developer evangelism to product marketing, and now uh, one of two product managers, of course, with Ashwini here on Aflo. So it's been yeah, one one amazing journey working with the community and, and the Ionic team. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And Matt, and I understand you're located um, in Madison, right, where the Ionic headquarters is? I am. I am coming to you from one of the rooms at HQ. <laughs> That's right. Nice. Yes, yeah. yes, we do have an office, even though we're uh, all over now. You know, I, I'm in Atlanta, like I mm -hmm. said, but it's a uh, I have been to the office before and it's it's really great. And Madison's such a great city too. And so uh, what do you like to do for fun, Matt? Uh, lots of things. I think my biggest change and, and hobby addition over uh, really the pandemic and beyond is getting into bicycling, which has been really fun. Um, we have a, one of the top 10, I don't know what number we are, but we're in the top 10 for infrastructure in the United States in Madison. So point of pride. Uh, here and felt almost uh, compelled and like I had to get into bicycling. So that's been a wonderful, fun activity, friends, family, getting in shape, you know, burning off some stress. I, sometimes I bike into work down here. It's wonderful. So, yeah. Really Very good. cool. Yeah. I, I have an electric scooter, so I am more on the lazy side of the two wheel, <laughs> two wheel experience, but it's, it, that's awesome. That works. That works. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Ashwini, uh, tell us about, you know, what you've been working on here at Ionic. Yeah, um, I'm glad to be on this webinar with you guys. And uh, not as much as a veteran of Ionic as Matt is. I just finished my one year anniversary in June, but it's been so exciting. I I mean, I don't even know where the time went. It was so, so like busy and exciting. And like, it was great to, um, I am really glad to join. The, I'm glad that I'm Got to join the Ionic team and like working on this product. So, um, yeah, but I came in as a product uh, manager at Ionic and previously also in last few jobs, I have been in a product manager role as well. Um, so not as much of a movement as uh, Matt did within Ionic, but uh, I, I was, I was <clears throat> fortunate enough to be a product manager in various different sectors like fundraising, experiential marketing, and now like mobile CICD. Uh, so it is kind of exciting to, you know, uh, try doing product work on various different types of products and kind of learn that and bring those not bring that knowledge in and apply it to something new. So it's it's been really great. Awesome. Yeah, I I, I actually also just kind of finished up my my first year last month. And it's been really great to work with you and learn a lot about AppFlow and see the additional investment that's been made on AppFlow with, you know, two two product managers and and all the engineers that are working on it. And so Ashwini, you're also from the Midwest, correct? I am just a little south of Madison, uh, just two hours south. Um, so I do get 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 a chance to go up and uh, to the HQ sometimes every few months, which is kind of nice. I, I do like our office up there. Yeah. And I understand that you like to play tennis. I'm also, I also, I also like to play tennis. Uh, you've been pretty busy with that lately, right? I do. I do. I uh, um, loved that sport growing up uh, as a kid, uh, but never actually got a chance to play. And then a few years ago, I was like, okay, I'm going to start learning it. And then um, obviously this was like a year or so before pandemic. 
Um, and then when pandemic happened, it just kind of turned out to be a, a perfect sport where you can just be outside and, and play it at a safe social distance uh, and forces you to play at a safe social distance. So it just kind of stuck with it. And uh, now I do, I do try to spend as much time playing as I can with everything else going on, but I, I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm not the best player. I spend a lot of time chasing the ball down more than anything, but it is really fun to be outside and the weather here in Atlanta is nice year round. So it's, it's nice to be able to play um, whenever I can. So awesome. Well, yeah, thank you all so much for sharing more about yourself and, you know, with, with, with the attendees here and with me. Um, I've been able to meet both of you in person, which has been really exciting uh, to get to know y'all and also as, as, you know, professionally and personally. So yeah, I, uh, it's been really great to learn more about y'all. So uh, I do want to learn more about the people who are attending here today as well. So we're going to start with a quick poll. Uh, we're going to be covering a lot about AppFlow, so it's helpful for us to know what your experience level is. So we're going to go ahead and launch a poll here in Zoom. Uh, what is your experience with AppFlow? Uh, you can choose just learning about it. I've explored some features or I'm an AppFlow pro. So you will see that pop up there on your screen here in Zoom. And uh, if you could go ahead and select which uh, what your experience level is, either just learning about it, exploring some features, or you are an AppFlow pro. I know we definitely have some pros. I've seen, I recognize some names in the chat, so. <laughs> and we'll just give y'all a minute to answer there. I saw someone else from Atlanta too in the chat. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So yeah, we'll give just another uh, few moments here for y'all to answer the poll. What is your experience with AppFlow? And then we'll take a look at the results. Okay. Wow. So yeah, it looks like we do have a lot of new AppFlow um, users here on on the meeting on the webinar today. So forty six percent of you uh, saying that you're just learning about it, and thirty twenty nine percent, so just under thirty uh, percent, have explored some of the features. Uh, twenty six percent are AppFlow pros. As I said, I knew I recognized some names there in the chat. So we do have some with uh, a more robust experience with AppFlow, but. Nice to see that there are a lot of you out there who are learning about it, and hopefully we'll be able to dig into that with you today. So just to provide a quick overview for those of you who are new to AppFlow, I'm going to review the platform. So AppFlow is the mobile CI CD solution built by Ionic. It allows you to quickly build and ship your mobile applications across all platforms. So we do that by providing native builds. This means that you can take your mobile applications uh, built in Capacitor, React Native, or even traditional iOS and Android apps and build them in a cloud environment. That means that you can create native Android and iOS binaries without having to maintain any Mac hardware for iOS or build infrastructure. So we maintain all the build dependencies for you and what we call build stacks. So you don't have to wrestle with versions of CocoaPods and Node and, and Android Studio. And as I said, we do have support for multiple architectures. So no matter how you're developing, you can build with AppFlow. We also give you some fully managed build environments. This means that we manage your signing certificates for you, as well as allow you to create custom environments where you can store uh, environment variables and custom configurations. That way, whether you're building production, test beta, dif different versions of your application, you don't have to enter in all those details manually every single time. It's very configurable and easy to do right from the AppFlow dashboard. Also in the AppFlow dashboard, we provide you with one-click publishing to app stores. This means that you can deploy your native iOS and Android builds to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store automatically. So you can do this either from the dashboard or you can also automate a process that will trigger a build and a deploy for commits to a specific branch. This helps to remove the manual steps that you normally have to go through in App Store Connect or Google Play Console. One of the most popular features of AppFlow, though, is live updates. So live updates allows you to ship instant web code updates. This means that you can 
deploy changes to the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript of your mobile app without having to go through a new native release. This means that you don't have to go through the traditional App Store approval process in order to get updates to your users. Uh, so this means that you can do things like deploy critical bug flix, fixes, um, A-B testing, or try out different features with different versions of your application. This process is App Store compliant, and we also have tooling that allows you to automate your live updates, integrate your live update processes with other CICD tools, and even host them yourselves if you need a more secure option. If you uh, attended our last webinar, we um, did a lot, a, a deep dive into live updates specifically, and we'll be talking more about them in just a little bit, spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. And uh, last but not least, we also have CICD automations. This allows you to trigger workflows uh, that run the entire build and deploy process. It is designed specifically for mobile, but you don't need any mobile DevOps experience uh, or expertise. So this means that you can release more often and you can also leverage existing tools. So if you're already using GitLab or GitHub Actions for other parts of your workflow, you can leverage Ionic or AppFlow tooling within those existing pipelines. So what all this means essentially is that you're able to ship faster and more frequently. So the average AppFlow user per week deploys to App Store six times, deploys live updates eight times, and triggers more than 20 automations. This is on a weekly basis, and this is the average AppFlow user, and this is based on our real usage data. So we do have some AppFlow users that are shipping even more than this. So by leveraging AppFlow's platform and tooling, you can deploy much more quickly to your users, get a much faster feedback loop, and get back to building your application, which is what we actually all like to do and have fun with, not deploying. All right, so let's get to the good stuff. Uh, we know that you are all interested to learn about the latest updates to Apple. That's why we're here, right? So if you've been following the blog, you know that we've released several new features lately that are greatly improving the building, testing, and shipping experience in AppFlow. So we're gonna talk about some of these. And just as a reminder, uh, please feel free to use the Q&A section to ask any questions that you have for us, and we will have time to answer those at the end. All right. so. First, let's talk about the mobile app build experience, particularly troubleshooting failed mobile builds. Um, Ashwini, what can you share with us about AppFlow Assist? AppFlow Assist, <clears throat> I have to say, I think AppFlow Assist is probably one of the most bleeding edge technology feature that we have implemented in AppFlow. Um, I would love to share the story behind it too. So we all know that uh, Chat GPD and OpenAI is all everyone has been talking about this year. That means our engineering also got really excited about this new toy that they can play with. Um, we have this tradition of saving the last two days of our sprint, we call them uh, Jedi days, uh, for our teams to kind of experiment with new ideas, come up with some new proof of concepts. And this is one of those brilliant ideas that we were able to productize uh, in AppFlow. Um, so um, of course, our, during our product discovery sessions, we have identified a pain point of failed, uh, a pain point that the failed builds present. Like it takes time to debug, fix it, um, and and it, this was a perfect solution uh, to that problem. Um, so our ultimate goal with Airflow uh, is to get you from build to deploy efficiently. And that means we want to minimize the amount of time you're spending debugging and fixing your builders. Um, so why not get that out of the equation uh, by letting Apple Assist do all the hard work? Um, so as you can see in the screenshot that uh, Cecilia is sharing, um, Apple Assist will pass out the relevant context uh, from your, the build log, uh, build log from a failed build, um, and then provide that context to open AI so it can pull up possible solutions for you. Um, it's that simple. Um, and you can also iterate on those solutions if you, as needed as well. Um, so overall, it, it really makes this uh, troubleshooting process uh, much easier and faster. Um, and the best part, like every Airflow user can start using it today. It's already part of Airflow. It's out there for you to give it a try. And we would definitely love uh, to hear more feedback from you on how this feature is kind of helping you expedite your CICD uh, process as well. So yeah. Yeah, that's, that's I'm really excited about this because it really takes like 
you know, trying to copy and paste the error message into Google, which is what I normally do uh, with not so much success, you know, to the next level. And so just to kind of reiterate too, you know, none of the code, your project code is shared. Uh, it's just the error message that's sent up in order to get some potential solutions. And I actually used this recently because I was doing a quick build uh, of a capacitor app that I had created. And I went to go do an Android build and it failed. And it's because I never actually added the Android capacitor project. I only added the iOS and it, you know, told me right away, it's like, oh, this, this happens whenever there's not a project that's found, um, you know, you probably need to add it. And it was super helpful. And I didn't have to go searching for, to try and parse out what the error message meant, because sometimes it can uh, feel like, like you're trying to decode, uh, like something pretty cryptic. So uh, yeah, so very excited for this one for sure. And I love that you mentioned also our Jedi days, because I think that's something that's really unique to Ionic. And I love that we do that here. Uh, we've had other features like simulator builds has also come out of Jedi days. So the uh, engineering team here is really invested in AppFlow as a platform and trying to improve it and add these really exciting new features. So it's awesome to see them come to fruition in the product itself. So uh, yeah, so make sure that you check that out and let us know what you think. Uh, this is available for all plans. So the uh, the next latest release that we'd like to talk about is one that's exciting to me personally because I come from a web testing background. And I was very, very surprised how difficult and complex it is to test mobile applications, like magnitudes harder than I thought it would be. And so this next... Um, feature really helps to address that specific use case. And we're talking about native app previews. Um, Ashwini, do you want to give us a quick rundown on native app previews? Yes, I do. Um, so this is also one of those features that we were able to take from ideation through productization in relatively short time. Um, we all know testing is a crucial step for any app development, especially with native there are some hoops you have to go through before you can even begin testing. Um, do you have do you have access to the devices? Can you run simulators or emulator on your machines? Do you have access to the right kind of artifacts? Um, and and it does add up, right? Um, so this feature does take a lot out of that, a lot a lot of it out of your equation because you can do all of the all of your native app testing directly in the browser. Um, so. I'm just going to tell you that we partner with Appetizer.io to build this feature and then have Cecilia give you a quick demo so you can see it in action. Yeah. So like I said, I've, I was excited about this one. I've used it myself and it's uh, it's something that's really exciting. So I'll go ahead and share that here. I'm going to. So I'm going to pull up our AppFlow dashboard, and this is our Ionifits app, which is a demo app that we have uh, in order to demonstrate different features and the use of Ionic. And here is the builds list in AppFlow. And we can see here that this build, it's an iOS build, and it has this little icon here, I icon. Uh, it says preview app when you hover over that. So we can click on that. Uh, we can also click into the build and click on preview app here. And what that's going to do is it's going to open that iOS simulator build in Appetize in a simulator. So this is a real native binary. It's an iOS simulator build. It's not a web build. We're able to run that in the browser. Um, this is also shareable via URL. So this URL here, you know, we could um, open it in a incognito window and we are able to actually interact with the application. So if you need to share with stakeholders on your team who may not have access to simulators, emulators, or be able to run a binary on their device, this is really great. I actually even like it even though I do have emulators and simulators because sometimes I get issues with like reloading the simulator or an old version of the app like still being stuck on there. So having a fresh, clean environment for testing every single time is also really helpful. So as you can see in the Appetize kind of interface here, you can choose from different devices. Uh, there's iPhones, there's even iPads as well. And you can select from older iOSs if needed as well. So if you wanted to test a feature on older devices or older iOSs, you can do that. This is specifically designed for manual testing. Uh, and so I'm going to bump this up to 100. Hopefully, yeah, that fits on the screen there. And we're going to go ahead as well, turn on 
network intercept, and debug logs. So by turning that on, as I interact with my app during this session, we'll be able to capture any network logs and debug logs and then export them if we need to. Uh, also, you'll notice that we can rotate the device here uh, as we're interacting with it. So once I hit tap to play, that is going to install the that native binary that iOS Simulator build on the device and launch it. So we're here we have Ionifits and we can go ahead and interact with it the same way that we would um, on a simulator. So we can click here, we can log in, it'll bring up their keyboard. Let's see. It's, um, oh, sorry, it's user at test.com. <laughs> Clicking on a keyboard is always fun, but this is how, how we do it. Uh, you can also use your real keyboard, but it's I think it's good to interact with it like you would on a real device. And we can interact with our app. And one thing I want to show you once I log in here. Really secure password there. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> hopefully nobody has. Um, is, once we're logged into the app here, as I scroll down, we can see our network log. So we can see that we're hitting off zero. We can see that taking place and capture all of those. So if we wanted to download those network logs you know, for quality control or for testing, we can do that. We can then also interact with our application. So this is a kind of HR style app, Ionifits. Um, you can go, for example, to our um, settings here. And we can see how this would work with the, when we hit the contact us. That will launch our browser. And that's what we would expect the app to do. And it's actually launching the browser on the simulator device. So we can see that behavior. We can also confirm that our, you know, our breadcrumb here is working to take us back to the app. And we can see here in our e-commerce kind of store app as well, uh, where we're able to interact with it. We're seeing able to see the tote here. Uh, one thing I want to show is let's just demonstrate the debug log is we have this Apple Pay that's for demonstration purposes only. And so when I click on that, what happens in our debug log, we can see failed to present payment controller. So we're able to capture that log that takes place because this is just a dem demonstration app. We can, however, interact with other parts of the application. So if we uh, close out of our cart here, and again, this is all gonna be the same kind of swiping motions that you get with a real device. Uh, you can also hold down Alt in order to kind of mimic this pinch and zoom that you would on a uh, on a device. So you can interact with it that way as well. And again, you can continue to kind of monitor that functionality. I did want to note, this is the expenses portion of the app, that because this is a simulator, there's going to be certain hardware functionality that you're not going to get out of the box. That's the same with any iOS simulator. So for example, if I click this camera icon, we can't actually take a picture because it's not a real phone with a real camera. We can, however, add media to the device via this add media functionality here. That's this is essentially going to allow us to you know, pick something. I'll go ahead and just add this random image. And that's going to give us a pop-up media sent to device check photo library. So we're able to now go into photos on the simulator and I can see that that's been added. So if I did want to do any kind of like media uploads in my app, I could leverage that in order to interact with the with the device that way. So you do get a lot of functionality out of the box. Again, if you are have doing manual QA on a simulator normally, it's going to be a very, very similar experience. And it allows you to share this with stakeholders to get product um, validation and verification as well. So to create this build in order to be able to interact with it, in the dashboard, it's super easy. Essentially, when you go to create a new build, uh, you're going to choose your commit, and then you can do iOS simulator build and just toggle this native app preview. And that will allow you to have that icon that you can click on to interact with it. This also works for Android debug builds. Again, you'll have your native app preview here, and that'll create the build for you to be able to interact with via this icon. So. Yeah, super exciting. I, I love playing around with it. It's uh, I've kind of experimented with it and found some new functionality. Uh, you can even send screenshots and capture the, those off the device the same way you could with a regular simulator. So um, yeah. Uh, Ashwini, anything that you want to add that I may have missed or anything you want to add there? Yeah, I think that was a great demo today. I don't think I could have done it as well as you did that demo right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, like Cecilia showed, there's so much capability in this feature, like capturing network log and debug logs. And there's a lot that you can accomplish with 
uh, doing all that testing right in the browser. But what I like most about this feature is how it makes non-QA and or non-technical teams more efficient as well, right? Now your product group can do their UAT a little bit sooner without having the individual devices set up or uh, having access to the um, app on their own uh, phones. Um, maybe your sales and marketing team can take a sneak peek at what's coming down the pipe so they can start prepping their materials. Um, so if there's so much you can do, like there are so many uses of this feature outside of just what testing uh, can be accomplished. Um, and then based on what we, uh, I have seen in Outflow so far, I can tell you that this feature has been a game changer for some of our customers based on how often they're using it and how much they're using it. Um, and now uh, this feature is exclusively available on our paid plans uh, and we're looking forward to like kind of more customers adopting it to expedite their testing process. So yeah, uh, do give it a try. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for adding that information. And and yeah, so uh, like I said, you, this is also for any type of build. So it doesn't have to be a capacitor app. It's anything that will compile to native iOS or, or Android. So um, all right. So Ashwini, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, and then so Ashwini doesn't get all the fun, Matt. I, I'm coming to you next because I know that we have some exciting stuff to, to talk about as well. Um, so you've been cooking for this one on a while. I know that uh, this next update that we're going to talk about, and fittingly enough, it's related to AppFlow Live updates. So like we mentioned earlier, AppFlow Live updates let you ship updates to your users instantly without having to go through a new native release. Uh, so Matt, what can you tell us about improvements there? Yeah, lots to talk about here. If you've been on our other recent Ionic shows and webinars, we've been, uh, like you kind of hinted at, teasing it for a while. We really want to make sure it's all buttoned up and ready to go. Uh, and we're so, so, so close. So stay tuned on that. Um, but this is um, a variety of updates that encompass, and that's partly why uh, it's taking a bit of time to, to make sure we have all the bases covered. Um, it's part of a, a, our really updating the entire live update suite that now spans not just Cordova and Capacitor apps, but federated capacitor, our self-hosted live updates for security conscious companies, enterprises, and Ionic portals as well. Um, so a lots to, lots to encompass there. And essentially what this is, is um, the start of many changes to come to enhance our performance, download speeds, and um, new innovative features that we want to do. Um, and so what we realized we had to do is effectively rewrite the SDK from the ground up in, um, more of the iOS and Android native programming languages um, to do so. So the original, if you have used our Cordova best base SDK, which has been around for many years now and is the um, current official solution, um, we have rewritten it in, from the ground up to be more native focused instead of more JavaScript focused, um, which uh, currently just the way that's architected and, and being built on the Cordova stack um, kind of holds us back admittedly from doing some of the changes and and more innovative features we want to want to put out. So coming very soon, we're gonna have a bunch of new um, announcements and docs for this. Um, and for, if you are a live updates user for capacitor apps, we have a capacitor based SDK that'll be rolling out for that into beta here very soon, as I mentioned. And um, really exciting there, is, is, as you kind of hinted at with the delivery speed, we're seeing Times, um, times vary, of course, depending on the size of your live updates, your user's network, but um, anywhere um, from several seconds to tens of seconds improvement from the downloading and extracting and applying a live update on a user's device. So that's just the start of where we're um, taking live updates and there's going to be more from there. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, I think it's exciting because for me, this uh, signals the larger migration across all of the Ionic tooling towards Capacitor and kind of being able to leverage that high quality tooling across the entire development stack. You know, not only are we talking about from building perspective, the development perspective, but actually for the deployment as well. And so I, I've been really excited to, to see that. If you uh, attended our last webinar, we did have a demo of that functionality and you can kind of see the speed improvements. But really for me, I think unlocking new functionality and features is what I'm really excited to see. And again, so that's coming for Capacitor, Federated Capacitor, self-hosted live updates, and Ionic portals. And I understand the migration process, if you are using our Cordova-based SDK, is going to be pretty easy. Uh, Matt, do you, are you going to show us a little bit more about that? 
Yeah, let's take a look. That is, awesome. let me share my screen here. Um, right. Something at Ionic across the board and certainly on the AFLO team, we try to really take a lot of time to get right and pride ourselves on is making sure that our developer experience is uh, top notch. And so when you're talking about, um, in this case, the eventual migration from the Cordova to capacitor um, plugin, um, very excited to kind of show how that works. We've designed it in such a way to be as smooth as possible and in, in, uh, include no disruption to your end users, um, which of course is probably when you're thinking of live updates and how that works um, and, and how everyone uses those, that is just absolutely critical. Um, we don't want to, uh, or we've all encountered mobile apps that have had, um, you know, sort of janky user experiences between versions or when they, you can tell under the scenes, they're migrating some native functionality and, and uh, yeah, that's not great, right? That, uh, for us as developers and, and uh, as mobile users. So um, yeah, what's really great about this and what I'm showing here is Visual Studio Code and just a sample app is there's only a handful of steps to move over. And again, we'll have this all published out um, shortly for everyone. Um, the, there's only really a couple steps. Um, you'll be uninstalling the Cordova plugin Ionic plugin, um, uh, which of course is just anything you'd normally do with removing a plugin. Um, so we're gonna remove that from our project, add, which I won't do here, we all know kind of what that looks like, add a new plugin that's called capacitor slash live updates. Uh, more appropriately named as well, the longstanding uh, legacy name for us. Um, and then there's just a couple project cleanup tasks, honestly. Um, in the capacitor config file, you may have used the disable deploy property for local development, so we can get rid of that from, um, from the project here. Um, and then there's just a little bit of cleanup in our iOS and Android files. And so what I love, again, about working with capacitors, these are real native projects that live that are we commit to source control we work on them um they're not ephemeral we, we kind of hang on to them so at the top level with android and ios um we can uh access them for the file tree so often i don't even open android studio or xcode if i uh, am making small changes like i'm going to show here um, and the, really the the cleanup step is we have these old variables for um live updates the cordova based plugin that will delete um, in the strings XML file for Android and the info P list, which is the common, of course, for plugins and other, um, you know, functionality. We have um, all these old keys and strings that we can delete um, from there, right? Um, once we're done with that, we'll save that off, run an NPX cap stink to sync our projects and that effectively copies over and, and removes those, um, the native bits of the Cordova plugin from our project. And, um, you know, again, we'll uh, maybe we can drop a link to that previous webinar where we show the um, the integration of the new plugin and how that works and things like that. Um, but for yeah, for now that's it. Um, and then essentially, because you are um, we are removing a native plugin, of course, that means we'll need to um, create a new native build. Um, so that is that is one thing that. Um, that whether it's live updates plugin or any native code changes, if you've worked with uh, mobile that you have to think about is putting out a new version of the app stores. But from your end user um, experience and your users, we are actually um, uh, handling this all for you in AppFlow when you run a native build and you deploy live updates. So that that changing from the Cordova plugin installed in, in let's say version 1.0 of the app to version 1.1 um, with the new capacitor plugin will be seamless. So there should not be any um, breaking in between versions. Um, the users on the original version will get the right um, manifest file that Live Updates uses for the changes. And the new one, which does use a slightly new format um, and name for that, they will get that uh, as well. So seamless to your end users, they won't know anything's changed. All we have to really do is create a new iOS or Android build. Um, set our environments, you know, make it a essentially app store, you know, production type of um, build, and we're off to the races. Submit to that at the app stores, and then you can start shipping, shipping live updates. Um, so that's what I love about this. Um, we'll have more details in the docs, but essentially that's it. Uh, just removing and cleaning up your your capacitor uh, app project, installing the new plugin, and pretty much away you go. 
Thanks yeah, I mean that honestly that that looks easier than some other um updates that I've had to make to my apps, <laughs> even with just like NPM um, you know, packages. So yeah, thank you so much for for showing us that. I'm super excited about this one. I know that the uh the beta is is imminent. Uh so people are probably itching to get their hands on it. We'd love for y'all to try it out and let us know uh what your feedback is, you know, what your like and if you run into any issues. This is something that like Matt said, is a big endeavor. It, we try to account for all these different use cases and edge cases, but uh, it's something that once y'all start to use it, we'll we'll be able to get a lot more feedback. So we're so so excited about sharing this. And I saw one comment in the chat that was, you know, this is what I've been waiting for, and that's that's how I feel too. <laughs> and so me too. Uh, we're it's, it's <laughs> really too. great to see that, that excitement in the community as well. So uh, as I mentioned, live updates is one of the uh, most popular features of AppFlow and being able to improve that experience is going to, is, is huge. So, um, awesome. Yeah. Thank you all so much, um, for, for going through that Ashwini and, and Matt. And so the next thing that I would like to do, uh, before we, we have even more to share, but, uh, I want to kind of get a sense of with another quick poll, um, of the features that we, that we just shared, which feature are you most excited to check out? So we are um, going to go ahead and launch that poll here in Zoom. So we talked about AppFlow Assist, which is the AI-assisted um, troubleshooting for failed builds. We talked about native app previews, which allows you to test native iOS and Android builds right in AppFlow. And the Capacitor Live Updates SDK, which is a ground-up rebuild of our Live Updates SDK with additional uh, speed and functionality. And if you can't decide, I don't blame you. Uh, I'm really... So we do let you choose if you want to, if you're ready to try out all of them. So we'll give you a minute here to answer in the poll before we continue on with some more updates and also get to your questions. I have seen a lot of questions coming through, so we'll make sure to have time for those as well. Well, I know I can't vote, but I will definitely be selecting I can't decide. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a decisive person anyway. Honestly, <laughs> I get excited about everything. So. <laughs> And so we'll just give y'all another minute here uh, to complete the poll. <clears throat> yeah, I keep finding new things in the native app previews. That's more I play around with it. So awesome. All right. Yeah. So speaking of native app previews, it looks like that's pretty popular. 38% are um, excited to test that out. Um, Looks like 25% are also looking forward to capacitor live updates. But as I expected, a lot of you, almost a third of you, cannot decide and are excited to check out all of them. So yeah, thank, um, that's really exciting. Let us know what you think. Um, we are here. We love to ch chat with y'all. We love to engage with y'all. And we cannot build the best mobile CICD platform without, without you telling us about your experiences. So um, great. So I do want to talk a little bit about what is coming soon to AppFlow. So, and one of the things I want to start with is maybe something that's like not quite as exciting, but while it's fun to talk about the big and splashy features, there's also these incremental improvements happening all the time. And those of you obviously that work in software know this, that a lot of times it's addressing the small changes, the technical debt, the user experience nits that can actually have a exponential impact on a user experience. And so at the last Ionic show, you know, we talked about some important performance improvements that we've made to AppFlow, specifically the login experience. And I have noticed that there's been some changes to the signing certificate experience in AppFlow as well. Um, Ashwini, you can talk a little bit about the signing certificate uh, changes that have been made and maybe what, what that is a part of. Yeah. Um... So like Cecilia mentioned, we are making some gradual improvements to this part of Apple too. Like nothing big and flashy about it, but it definitely a lot of quality of life improvements that you know we uh, we love to deliver uh, to our customers. Um, we want to make sure it's me. We make it easy for you to stay on top of those expiration dates. For example, uh, mm -hmm. for iOS uh, side of the world, because that's uh, it. It does have it's crucial and it happens a lot in in the iOS world too. Uh, we don't want those certificates getting expired and then your bills failing and then it does just disrupts your entire uh, pipeline. Um, so we're uh, we are making some changes to kind of separate out the iOS and Android certificate management, giving you information about when a certificate is, has already expired or about to expire so you can take further action on it. 
And then uh, we're also kind of looking to automate this process for you in future. So we're doing some discovery on it. Um, for Android, uh, there is also potential to add more capabilities to manage uh, various tracks for the deployment process. So we'll, we're looking at that, that, that as well. Um, but overall, there is a lot of incremental progress that we plan to make uh, to this feature to streamline it for you all. Uh, so just stay tuned and you, you will start seeing it in the dashboard. Yeah, I, so science certificates is one of those um, things that's so unique to mobile and such a headache <laughs> that uh, being able to make improvements there is really exciting. I mean, Apple already makes it pretty easy for you in that you can upload your science certificate, your provisioning profile, and also your Android keys and your key store file so that we can do all the signing for you. So you don't have to worry about injecting that into your environment or storing it and encrypting it and decrypting it. Uh, so we already take care of all of that for you, but the idea to be able to better manage those uh, with an app flow is really exciting. Yeah. And so... So finally, we have a very exciting uh, announcement related to everyone's favorite topic, which is build stacks. Uh, so um, as you know, Apple manages and updates the dependencies for you and what we call build stacks. These are essentially collections of software um, and then the, the operating system for our machines. Now, we re continuously are releasing these new versions of build stacks. If you are already using Apple, you probably see all the updates all the time. But we do have an announcement that's related to the machines themselves. So, um, you know, what can we share there? Um, so, as you all are aware, Apple is transitioning from Intel to Apple Silicon, and we are making some changes to our platform to support that. Um, there is definitely a big performance jump here that we expect to see. Um, we're looking at a close to 50% improvement in build times for your iOS native uh, builds. Um, that's huge because it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, just this week, we are getting ready to give access to this new build stack uh, to our test cohort. And we are really excited to see uh, how, how much improvement it's going to make for them. Um, and then as we, uh, and then we'll going to start making plans, to roll it out to our wider um, audience. So um, it's, it's exciting that we are kind of have this available to us now and, um, we're confident that it's going to really make a big difference um, in your ability to do your bills faster and get your apps into App Store sooner. All right. Yeah. So you heard it here first. Uh, M1 machines are coming. Uh, they're being rolled out incrementally, but you can keep an eye out for that. I know that we have been asked about this a lot and it's going to be a big improvement. So there's obviously a lot of testing to do because this is a hardware uh, update. So if you think software is difficult, hardware can be tricky as well. So, but keep an eye out for that and uh, let also, you know, feel free to reach out to your um, customer success manager if you would like to kind of get more information about when that could be coming to you. So. Awesome. Wow. So we shared so much today. And um, I just want to make sure that y'all all know that you are able to, you know, play around with some of the features that we talked about and get started with AppFlow very easily. Uh, for those of you who are already using AppFlow, who I'm sorry, who are not already using AppFlow, uh, you can get started today for free. Uh, we've actually made some enhancements to our free plan. Uh, this is a plan for indies and small teams to get started. Uh, if you've ever used it before, uh, you may have, um, or maybe you haven't used it before, but you can get started at ionic.io slash sign up. You can just sign up and get started for free. But our free plan now includes credits for native builds, meaning that you can now do native iOS and Android builds on our free plan. And it also includes 100 live updates to get started there. Uh, you can uh, use... I'm sorry, 100 live update monthly active users. And then as well, you can check out environment variables. And again, that AppFlow Assist is included on our free plan as well. So you can sign up, you can start building your application, you can start you know, deploying live updates to your users, you can get tr troubleshooting help with all your builds and start to leverage the power of AppFlow to ship your, app, your mobile app faster. If you do need more builds and live updates, um, automations, or native app previews, uh, our community plan, uh, which is also kind of built for indies and small teams, starts at $49 a month. We do have larger plans for you know, bigger companies and enterprises as well. You can always talk to us about that. But you can learn more at ionic.io slash appflow slash pricing. We would love for you all to check things out and let us know what you think. Really, uh, feedback is, is very important to us. 
uh, what features that you'd like to see, you know, what we can prove, even what you love about the platform. I, I love hearing success stories. I get to see people talk about, oh, like, you know, I had automated my entire process and now I just push a commit and I come back from lunch and I have an email that it's been deployed to test flight. Uh, we really love hearing those stories as well. But, you know, please make sure to reach out to us at appflow at ionic.io. And we also have surveys in the AppFlow dashboard where you can submit feedback to us directly. Uh, and Ashwini and Annette, I know that y'all are always open to chatting with our users and do so pretty regularly, right? Yeah, I just shared a calendar link in the chat. So feel free to use it to set up time with us uh, anytime you want to share some product feedback with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. yeah I mean, seeing... absolutely. Nothing, nothing we love more than connecting with all of you uh, over email or live in person. So... Uh, in fact, I see someone that we're going to be talking to in about an hour that's on this webinar. So shout out to that person. <laughs> Love to see it. So we'll be, uh... <laughs> yes, that's him. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, we've Dave. had some, we've had some, yeah, some, some recent updates too that have come because of feedback. Like I know commit search is one of them. Uh, so we made some changes to the UI based on feedback. And so we definitely take that into consideration and implement that. So, uh, yeah, so, so reach out to us, schedule time with the team, let us know what you think and check it out. If you're not already using AppFlow, it sounds like, you know, a good amount of you 40, you know, was like 40 some percent, right. We're just learning about AppFlow. So you can literally go create an account today and connect your repo and start building. So. All right, um, so we covered a lot. I know that there's some questions. I've been seeing them pop up. So we do have some time uh, to answer those. So let's go ahead and get to it. I will pull up the, uh, I know that Matt and Ashwini, I think you've been answering some in the in the chat as we've been going through, but uh, let's take a look. Um, Okay, so question here, what happens if you are using non-capacitor binaries or packages? Will this still work with Appetize? Yes, so Appetize is literally, it's just the simulator and the emulator. So as long as you have built an iOS simulator build or an Android debug build, so something that can run on a simulator or emulator, then you can use Appetize. So even if you're not using Capacitor or Ionic, if you know, you're using React Native or a traditional iOS, like Swift app or a Kotlin app, then you can leverage that as well. So um, yeah, so if you can use that for any any type of the framework that you're doing. Um, okay, and so that was kind of a fun one. Uh, would you mind sharing your recommended VS Code extensions? Um, I suppose those for JetBrains IDE would also be appreciated. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I love the Ionic VS Code extension. I use it all the time. So if you aren't using it, definitely check it out because it's my new um, favorite. I also just saw one today that's called VS Code Pets, where there's little like cats that like run around in your IDE and you can like throw balls and they chase them. <laughs> and so it's not really helpful for developer productivity, but it seems like a lot of fun. Um, so I uh, I, def I haven't tried it yet, but I saw somebody with it and now I have to get it myself. Uh, Matt or Ashwini, do you have any, any other ones that you'd recommend? Yeah, I'm looking right now. At, that's always a good reminder <laughs> to check. Um, I really like the Dracula theme, which is what mm -hmm. I showed um, one of the colors because it looks like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle colors in my uh, 80s child brain. Um, I use Grammarly for when I write docs for Ionic um, because it has, uh, uh, you know, spell checking and grammar and other things. Of course, Iron Ionic extension um, now at over 240k installs, thousand installs. Goodness, um, and I think that's about it. I don't use a ton of um, extensions, really. As I, it depends if I feel like I'm looking at a new programming language. I love how VS Code, um, you know, sort of shares recommendations, and sometimes I try those. But yeah, those are the main ones. Yeah. Um, awesome. I, I do see a question about uh, Vue.js 3 composition API in TypeScript with Ionic, and that is definitely supported. I literally, I just built an app with, with I, I'm a Vue, I'm a Vue person. I love Vue. Um, I use it whenever I can. And I also like the composition I, API in TypeScript. And so I just built a, um, a game app with Phaser and Vue 3 with the composition API and, and TypeScript. So that is definitely uh, supported and you can definitely use Vue. I, rec I would recommend checking it out. 
And there's one more question related to security as well. So I did want to post in the chat here our ionic.io slash appflow slash trust page. So this has all of our information about how AppFlow keeps you secure and safe for you and your users' data. We have do have SOC 2 Type 2 compliance, um, which when we, this page really breaks down how we protect your source code, you know, the types of encryption, encryption that we use, use and any kind of information that you would need um, regarding our security practices. So definitely, definitely check that out. And if anything is unclear, let us know. But yes, we do have SOC 2 Type 2. So both uh, we, we've completed that entire process. I know Matt, that took probably the better part of Matt's like last year and a half. So, uh, so if that's a requirement for your, for your company, then um, AppFlow has you covered. Absolutely. I also, from a, in case it helps, I dropped one of our capacitor security guide for more of, uh, you know, you all implementing apps. Um, that's a really good starting point for all types of security c concerns for your specific mobile apps. And that applies beyond AppFlow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because as we showed in the Ionic Ionifits demo in the native app preview, that leverages secure authentication. Um, we are connecting via Auth0 for single sign-on. And so things like that, we can kind of help you get um, get your questions answered to ensure that your users of your application are having a secure experience in addition to the build tools that you're using. All right. Um, great. So any... Other questions? It looks like there's some there questions about- There was a, about, one I wanted yeah. to address, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, someone asked about um, view, view 3, um, TypeScript, Composition API. Does Ionic Framework support that with Ionic 7? Um, it does, absolutely. Um, it, mm -hmm. and, and I'm pretty sure this goes back to Ionic maybe 5. We've had view 3 support um, back a couple versions. Um, so yeah, all of that is supported. Um, and yeah, definitely recommend that. Um, it's all uh, because of the way that we build Ionic Framework, whether you're using Angular, React, Vue, or just vanilla JavaScript, uh, it all works really well. Um, but of course, those those three frameworks are most um, most supported. And then there's um, the, some, some questions around different ad networks and um, analytics. Um, so for the most part, um, when with Capacitor, they, they they can be all supported. It depends on if there's a native plugin for iOS and Android that the provider has. Um, that's generally what you want to see for the best experience. Um, sometimes if there's a, uh, you can drop in the JavaScript web library into a capacitor mobile app and have it work. Um, it's not guaranteed because of the, again, running it in the web view and the way that mobile apps work versus desktop or mobile web, um, but certainly give it a try and then, um, uh, we we kind of recommend um, opening up issues or reaching out to the master team for new plugin ideas. Um, they are uh, always listening, always taking new feedback. That's how some of our recent additions like the Google Maps plugin came to be. It's all from community feedback. So if there's something that you feel uh, strongly is missing, let us know. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much for answering that. Yeah, it looks like we have one more question that just, that just sl uh, slipped in here. A couple of minutes left, but it's about um, sending back information with the binaries um, to Bitbucket, GitLab, or GitHub pipelines. Uh, so I know that AppFlow has the a, a, C, a CLI that you can interact with so that if you matter what CICD provider that you're using, you can use our build infrastructure to create your native binaries. And then there is, so I don't know, Matt, if you want to answer this one or I can, um, if you feel, yeah, I know we have that information, um, the output information in our docs as well about what um, what's available. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, generally speaking, um, that is something that we have strong support for, which is um, you're bringing your own, your own, your other CI CD platform, um, whether it's something hand rolled with Jenkins or GitHub Actions, um, GitHub, GitLab, all of the providers. Um, we, you can use our, our, what we call the cloud CLI that interacts with uh, AppFlow for performing native builds, live updates. Um, and in the case of this particular question, um, that does produce and give you the IPAs, APKs, AABs, all the, all the, all the extension names um, in your own pipelines. So you, we showed off a lot of our, what we call the AppFlow dashboard, the web-based GUI, um, but you don't have to use that. You can use our 
cloud CLI. Um, if you're on one of our paid plans um, and you have your own uh, existing infrastructure, and, and many do, we have, uh, I'd say, probably a pretty even split on, on those and teams that use both of those. Absolutely. Yeah. We have some examples too, for example, of, you know, for example, extracting the build ID and sending that up to sauce labs or, um, you know, leveraging mm -hmm. the, um, the commit, if you needed to like reference that commit somewhere. So there, the, our docs have these really great output tables that show all the different, uh, information that you can get from a specific command, and then you can parse any of that output and then leverage it in your CICD pipeline. So. Yeah. Um, check awesome. out, um, the link that, that uh, Cecilia just dropped for AppFlow slash CLI there for the Cloud Cloud Docs. All right. Well, I know that we're up uh, to the very end here of this time. Thank you all so much for the great questions, participation. It um, has been really fun to chat with you all and share all these updates. And please, please do not be a stranger. Stay in touch. Reach out to us. Schedule some time with us. You know, um, let us know what your favorite hobbies are. What If you're dressing up for Halloween, you know. Um, <laughs> Any, any of those things. And uh, yeah, Diana, is there anything else that we, we needed to share before we hop off? Hey, everybody. What a treat. Like I said, not just one presenter, not even two for you today. We had three presenters that gave such amazing information. And I know that there were quite a bit of links posted in the chat. Some questions again that I know Matt answered about when will the recording be available? Will we also be including the slides? So let me just do a quick little wrap up for everybody today. We will have a recording available, if not today, then tomorrow, but typically we are pretty speedy in getting those out to you via email and also posting them on our website. So when in doubt, you can always visit us back at our website. I'll go ahead and drop the link to our resources page that directs you to our webinars. And I know a few of you had asked about previous AppFlow content. If you go ahead and click that link, it'll actually showcase a lot of our AppFlow related webinars. So if you want to check those out, please do. But rest assured that you will get a copy of the slides and a recording uh, later on today. And if not today, then tomorrow. So a lot of good links were also dropped in there as well. I know that our presenters have a list of additional resources that we'll be able to provide in that post event email as well. So just wanted to say thank you to Cecilia, Ashwini, and Matt for joining us today. What a treat. And also thank you to everybody who joined us. I think that we received a lot of comments that this is exactly the content you were looking for. Um, we will have a survey that's also included in that email where if you want to expand on that feedback, if there was something that maybe we didn't cover today that we can cover in a future webinar or other topics you'd like to learn about, that's definitely the place for you to jot down that information and we'll make sure to review it. But until next time, I hope that all of you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, everybody. Diana. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Asmini. Thanks, everyone.